If your vocal automation doesn't look like this, your vocals are not sexy enough. But stay tuned. After Hours got what you need. Welcome to After Hours. My name is Gregory Scott. Tonight we're going to be talking about automation and specifically I want to get into using automation in ways to enhance your arrangement and your dynamics. Meaning when you come into one section, things change and elements come and elements go and balances shift and frequencies shift and effects and space and depth. And automation is one of the most powerful tools that we have as mixers to make all of this happen. So today I'm going to be focusing specifically on transitions. These are the moments that go from verse to pre-chorus and pre-chorus to chorus and intro to verse and all of these moments that you have that are opportunities to engage the listener and prevent their attention from wandering uh, which is the big trick in mixing you want to always be moving the spotlight around to keep the listener's ear focused where you think it needs to be focused for maximum emotional impact so let's start off with number one which is pushing and pulling a vocal or a top line element, whether it's a lead synth or whatever is carrying the moment of the section that you're coming into. So if you think about when you're coming out of a pre-chorus and into the chorus, generally speaking, what's happening there is you've got a lot of energy building up. You've got the music is kind of coming to this little climax, or maybe it's the second or the third chorus, you've really got a big climax happening. And what you want is for the vocal or the top line or whatever's the main instrument of choice to stay in focus even with all this explosion of energy around it. Now there'll be times when that's not true, when you want the focus to go somewhere else and that's all good and you'll use your judgment on that. But by and large, if you've got a vocal happening, you want people to be able to stay keyed into that because the brain is, we are trained evolutionarily, hundreds of thousands of years at work here, to key in to the human voice. And if it becomes indistinct, if we lose a word and we've been tracking everything up to that point and then suddenly we can't hear it, that's going to distract us. That's going to pull the listener out of the moment of the song. So when you hit the beginning, uh, the first, it called the downbeat of the first bar of a new section, whether it's a chorus or verse or whatever it is, sometimes it's just a crash cymbal that gets in the way of the vocal. Sometimes it's a couple of guitar chords and a synth stab. But whatever's going on, use your automation to shove that vocal up front and as with all things in mixing never be afraid to be aggressive so for me when i got a vocal coming in and i'm really because i'm an aggressive mixer so i will have levels pushing i'll have the master fader being pushed by a half or a full db when going into a chorus I'll have two or four new elements coming in. Sometimes they're hard pans, sometimes they're up the middle. There'll be an effect that hits. There'll be a synth from the previous section that's ringing out. And all this sound piles up. And for a moment, you've got some incredible density there. And through it all, there's this little tiny voice that's got to poke through. And I will, I'm not above shoving that fader up. Three, five, sometimes even 7 dB. Doesn't matter. Just do whatever it takes to keep that thing up there. You don't want it to blow people's brains out but you want them to be able to stay focused on that vocal and keep it audible but have it remain inside and connected to the music and a lot of times what that looks like is it's just the first word or two that really needs to be pushed up and then you can ramp it back down maybe slowly maybe quickly uh, but use your judgment in your ears but what you'll find is that as long as you just mm, tweak the, the listener's ear with that vocal uh, loud and proud for just the first syllable or the first word or the first three words in the phrase you can then kind of really push the vocal pretty far back into the music and they'll still be able to track what's going on because it's just that initial bit of sound that they need to stay focused in on it. So use this trick, leverage this trick to your advantage so that you can mix the music as aggressively as it needs to and not feel like you need to hold back on things or carve space or pull things out of the way in order to keep the vocal intelligible. Just shove the vocal to the front of the mix and then be clever about how quickly you pull it back and how much you pull it back. And sometimes you may have to trail it off across the, the full bar or two bars. It depends on everything else that's happening around it. But use your judgment there. But again, as with all things, never be afraid. So 
these are the powerful things that automation can do for you in your mixes. I encourage you to explore all of this and more. And if you have any ideas that I didn't hit in this, please hit us up in the comments below. Leave your feedback. Give us some likes. Do what you do. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Gregory Scott. This has been Kush After Hours. Till next time.